do we find out the weight of different isotopes? We use a process called mass spectrometry. Okay, it's used to determine the relative isotopic mass of different isotopes. And it's this big machine that looks like this. That was actually from a few years ago. They've got smaller desk size ones now. But the process is something like this. And it looks a little complicated, but it's not at all. There's two main points to it. The first thing we already know is that ions are charged atoms and these can be deflected by magnetic fields. What a mass spectrometer does is it has a look and it sees that lighter ions are deflected more. This makes sense. Heavier ions are deflected less. Okay, so let's look at it in detail. Stage one of mass spectroscopy involves ionization. We have to turn the atoms into ions. And this is where this happens, right at the front of the unit. The atom is formed into an ion by using electrons to knock off one or two electrons, okay, to make it a positive ion. And generally, we're only trying to knock off one um, electron to make it a positive one ion. So here you can see there's an electron source. They fire these electrons into the sample, and it knocks off electrons to give a positive ion. So now we've got a charged ion, and this stage is called ionization. The second stage is called acceleration. It's exactly what the name means. These particles are accelerated into this magnetic field. So they're just basically sped up so that they've all got the same amount of kinetic energy. So they're all traveling at the same speed. The third stage involves deflection. And this is this section here where the magnet is. Okay, it involves this entire section. This is the first bit with the magnet. And you've also got magnetic field across here. And this is going to cause deflection of the ions. And there's two major factors that influence the amount of defle deflection. One we've already discussed, which is the mass of the ion. And the second one is the charge of the ion. If the charge is greater, it's going to deflect more or attract more because it's got a higher charge. So let's have a look at the mass of the ion. Here we've got three different streams. So a mixed ion stream is coming into the mass spectrometer. You'll see that one ion A here is deflected the most and ion C is deflected the least. So these ones here are the lightest ions. These deflect the most, okay, because they're lighter, they weigh less, they have a lot or they have less mass. Whereas I and C are the heaviest ions, okay? These ones will not deflect as much. You need more energy to deflect those. The charge of the ion. So here's our mixed ion stream again. If these had different charges on them, the higher charge is deflected the most. So if we have a look, this one here is deflected the least, so it must be one plus ions. The green one here are two plus ions, and hypothetically, the three plus ions would be deflected the most because they've got the greatest amount of charge, okay? They're going to be attracted more to the electron magnet. Because there's two factors, the mass and the charge, which can be responsible for the bending or the deflection, okay, we come up with what's called the mass to charge ratio. And it's important that we consider both of these when we're trying to determine that the mass of an isotope. So an example of what I'm talking about is if you've got an iron with a mass of 28 and a charge of one positive, okay, the mass divide to charge ratio would be 28. 28 divided by 1. If you've got an iron though with a mass of 56 and a charge of 2 plus, your mass to charge ratio is going to be 28 as well. So they're both going to deflect by the same amount, but the masses are different. So it's really important that we consider the charge of that iron when we're looking at trying to work out what the mass of that iron is. Most of the ions passing through a mass spectrometer, though, will have a charge of plus one, which means that this isn't too much of a worry, but it's something that you need to remember and to take notice of because charge is important in the deflection through a mass spectrometer. 
And the last stage is detection. And this happens right at the end here. And basically they're detected um, electrically and you get a wave pattern that looks something like this or they call peaks. So a graph will come out and you'll have the relative isotopic mass on the bottom and you'll have the relative abundance in that sample on the side. So of course if you've got one type of atom in there the relative abundance has to be 100% okay because you've got isotopes of that of that element okay it can only equal 100% so the addition of the amount of the different isotopes must come to a grand total of 100% so in this sample here we've got isotope 7 is 50% of the total of that atom isotope 9 is 30% and the other 20% is made up of isotope H so we've got 50 plus 30 plus 20, which equals a total of 100%. Let's have a look here at molybdenum. This is a mass spectrometry graph that's being drawn of the various isotopes. And you can see here that there's seven different isotopes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They have relative isotopic masses of 92, 94, 96, 98 and 100, okay? The most abundant iron has or is the 98 here or the isotope with the relative isotopic mass of 98, okay? All of these abundances will add up to 100% of the total amount of molybdenum atoms of that isotope. So this short video just shows what we've been talking about. Iron B passes between two charged curved plates which deflect it in a curve so that it enters the area here where an electromagnet produces a vertical magnetic field. This further deflects the beam in an arc of a circle. On emerging from the magnetic field, the beam is deflected again by another set of charged plates which direct it into the detector. The amount of deflection by the magnetic field depends on the mass of the ion, strictly its mass to charge ratio, but the vast majority of ions have only a single charge. The deflection also depends on the strength of the field. Heavier ions will not be deflected sufficiently in the magnetic field to reach the detector. Lighter ions will be deflected too much. During a run, the magnetic field is gradually increased so that ions of successively greater mass enter the detector.